Hi everybody, welcome to our first maths lesson for term three. I'm going to ask everyone at home to get your math stuff ready. I'm just going to work on getting our document ready. You guys know I'm a little bit weird with how I like my document set up. <laughs> so we're going to start our maths lesson just like we would any other lesson. Um, I'm going to put math up the top. You guys should hopefully have your date on top of the page, a margin ruled in, and I've just written math on the top so that you guys know what we're doing. And today we're looking at number properties. I am, one of my computers is stuck on the other side and this is the one where I've got all of my stuff prepared on. So I'm sorry that it looks really strange that I'm going in and out, but you know, as, as everyone knows, sometimes technology works really well, sometimes it doesn't like me. So, we're looking at number properties. Once we finish with number properties, we're going to start working on some number patterns. But we don't have to worry about number patterns yet. This is just to give you guys a heads up as to what we're working on. So we're starting with the properties of numbers, and we're going down to the patterns that we can see with these numbers. So, when we talk about number properties, what are we looking at? So let's start with some really easy examples. If we have one plus two, where's my equals sign? There it is. <laughs> one plus two equals three. And this is the exact same as two plus one equals three. When we're adding numbers together, it doesn't really matter what order we put them in. We always know that 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1. When we take this on another, on another level, we can even flip the 3 into the other side of the problem. But if the answer comes over here, then we need to remember that this changes. So this is kind of the same as 1 take away 3, sorry, 3 take away 1 equals 2 and 3 take away 2 equals 1. So 2 plus 1 equals 3 and 3 take away either of these numbers will give us the opposite number. So we're only going to focus on these parts for now. So I'm going to have another Word document set up with some of these different problems. And what I'm going to ask you to do is write them out both ways. So I'm going to give you the two numbers and I'll have, for example, 2 plus 7 equals. This is the problem that you guys will have in your on the separate document. What I want from you is 2 plus 7 equals 9 and 7 plus 2 equals 9. So show me both ways that it works and both ways that it comes together. I'm going to leave you guys with this part. Pause the video here. Go start working on that other document. Um, write questions and answers in your book. And when you're finished that, come back to the video. Okay, so hopefully you guys have done your questions all in your workbooks. We're going to be checking those when we come back to class. Here we're going to work on some number patterns. What I want you guys to do is to count as close as you can to the number 50. We're not going to go up by one, two, three, four. I know that you all can do that. But in your workbooks, we're going to practice counting by twos. We're going to practice counting by threes. I'm going to cheat because I'm lazy. We're going to be counting by fives. 
And we're going to be counting by tens. So in your workbook, how will this look? You'd be writing two, comma, four, comma, six, comma. And that's our twos. Well, that's at least the start of our twos. For our threes, three, six. And if you get stuck, remember, just like I do, we're going to use our fingers. We're at three. Three plus three is six. So we're going to put six in our head, get another three on our hand. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Counting by fives. Some of you guys are going to find this really, really easy. Some of you guys are going to, might struggle just a little bit. But remember, it's all about practicing. It's all about getting our repetitions in. We're going to keep practicing so we can slowly get better and better at all of this. We're going to go five, 10, 15. All the way until we get 50. Tens. I'm going to give extra points to those of you that can get all the way up to 100 with your tens. You know what? Scratch that. We're going to count as close to 100 for our tens and fives. I know that you guys are capable. I know that's going to be a little bit difficult, but I know that you guys are going to be able to do it. And if you can't do it, don't stress. When we come back to school, we'll have a look at it and we'll look at what we're going to do and how we can work on getting better at this. So working on this in our workbooks, questions and answers all written out. Now, some of you guys might say, oh, sir, this is really silly. Why are we wasting our time with this? The reason why we're doing this and we're practicing really simple ones, because when you're at the shops, let's say that you want to buy some cans of Coke and you're having a look and on the shelf it says, oh, each can is $3 or I can buy this pack of 10 for 25. Which one is going to work out better? That's where if they're $3, what we've done here is we've practiced our three times tables. You might not be able to sit there quickly and go three times 10 is 30. But it might be a little bit easy to sit down in three, six, nine, and it might take a little bit longer, but you can count it out. And that way you can make an informed decision when you're buying something. Which one is better for you? Which is a better product? And which one will you save a little bit of money on? So with all of these, it's kind of like the cheat way of doing our times tables. I'm not going to sit down and ask you guys to write them out a thousand times. We're going to find different ways that we can practice just getting a little bit better at number patterns and counting up by these numbers. Let's say that you're doing your laundry and I've got um, how many laundry uh, scoops of laundry powder will I need if I have this many loads of laundry to do? Do I need to go to the shops before I finish all of my laundry or will I have time? These are all the questions that you'll be able to answer by working on these number patterns. So. In your workbooks, by the end of this lesson, you should have the questions for our number properties done, you're counting by twos and threes up to the number 50, and you're counting by fives and tens up to the number 100. So in your workbooks, let's get this done. Now I'll check it when we get back to class. Thank you.